Thank you, Father, that you are at work. And we pray that you will receive our worship. We pray that you will receive our praise. That you will receive our adoration and our love. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Have your way in our midst. Have your way. Jesus. 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 We love you. Thank you for your presence here, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, you know the needs in this room today. Father, where there are physical needs, where there is a touch needed spiritually, where there is a a family situation that just seems completely out of control, I thank you, Father, that we can bring them to you now. And today, friends, if you have a a situation that you just need to raise to the Lord, then I want to encourage you to do that now in Jesus' name. We thank you that you are the God of breakthrough. And we ask you to break through now in the name of Jesus. Would you bring your healing touch? Would you bring wholeness? Would you minister into relationships, Father? Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. We ask you to move. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Guys, you may be seated. So good to be sharing with you today. My name is Philip. I'm part of the pastoral team here. And if you were visiting us, we are so glad that you are with us. If you're watching us online for the first time, it is so good to to have you with us. We do have a visitor here. He's coming to church for the first time. I want to welcome Jesse's grandfather, Glenn Taylor. Let's welcome Glenn. (laughs) Glenn has been watching us online for quite some time, and he has recently moved to Swansea to the promised land. So, Glenn, we welcome you, and we pray that you will be blessed as you're with us. In Jesus' name. Today, we are continuing our series, Journey to Pentecost, and we're looking today at the person of the Holy Spirit. Last week, we shared a great message from Neil, didn't we? As he shared quite a personal story But he shared with us about the promise of the Holy Spirit. The early believers, they were shaken. They were wondering what was going on when Jesus ascended to heaven. But Jesus said, you will have the promise of the Holy Spirit. And we read about that in Acts 1 verse 8. And we can read that together. It was a a key verse that we looked at last week. Let's read it. But you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So to these early believers, they shared and believed the promise that Jesus gave to them. They prepared for the promise. They were expectant, and they said, we're going to get this promise, we're going after it. And they received the promise. They received the promise. So today we are going to consider the person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. God is wanting all of us as his children to live supernatural lives. As we talk about the Holy Spirit, I know for for some of us, this aspect of God may be a bit hard to grasp or, or understand. When we talk about the Trinity, we've got the Father, we have the Son, we've got the Holy Spirit. The Father is easy to understand. The Father having a Son makes sense. But the Holy Spirit can be hard to grasp, particularly if we are new to church or on a journey in our faith. 
But as we study the scripture, we discover that the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives is essential for us to live the life that God has for us. As Jesus was preparing to leave his disciples, he was giving them some words. He's about to be killed on a cross, and then he ascends to heaven, and he says these words in John 14, verses 16 to 17. He says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. In just these two verses, the Holy Spirit is teaching us, uh, sorry, Jesus is, is teaching us so much about the Holy Spirit. We know, first of all, that the Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a he. The Holy Spirit is not a gut feeling. It's not a fuzzy feeling. It's not an enigma. The Holy Spirit is the person of God. He has a personality. And all of us here today have personalities. Some of us are extroverts. We love to be out there in the crowds. Other, others of us are introverts. Don't bother me. I like to be by myself, please. We all have different personalities and the Holy Spirit has a personality he has feelings it's also important for us to note that for those who are not yet believers this is hard to understand part of verse 17 says it the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but Jesus went on to say these amazing words to his disciples and he says them to you and I today as his followers. He says, for he lives with you and will be in you. He will be in you. Just take that in for a moment. The Holy Spirit of God is with us and he lives in us. As the followers of Jesus, we have this. The very same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, he lives inside of us. We celebrated with glorious day, didn't we? He lives in us. We can hear from God. We have the power of God. If the Holy Spirit of God is living in us, we are filled with supernatural power today. We have supernatural power. You may have thought, you may be thinking, if I could just experience Jesus like the disciples did, that would be amazing. If I could walk on water, if I could have some of my loaves kind of multiplying and fish multiplying, if I could have some of that healing. The reality is, it is available to us today. And it is through the person of the Holy Spirit and Him living in us. John 16 verse 7, Jesus said, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. It's necessary that Jesus went so we can know the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So today I want us to consider four things that we receive through the person of the Holy Spirit. Today, if you're a follower, this is available to you. The Holy Spirit says, first of all, or the Holy Spirit gives us, first of all, the power of salvation. The power of salvation. It is the Holy Spirit that draws us to Jesus. And then God saves us miraculously through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And a good example of this is shown to us when Jesus was having a conversation with a Pharisee named Nicodemus. Nicodemus, he was pretty embarrassed about this. So he decided to go and have words with Jesus at night. And he said, Jesus, we know that you're amazing. We see that you can do all things. You must be of God. This, this was Nicodemus' words. Jesus said to him, hang on for a minute. First of all, you need to be born again before you can understand any of this. 
And Nicodemus responds and he says, well, Jesus, what are you talking about being born again? How can I go back into my mother's womb? I'm a grown-up. How can I do that? Jesus says these words in John 3, verses 5 to 6. He says, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to spirit, uh, uh, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Amazing words. It is through our Heavenly Father today that we receive a spiritual birth. When we, in, when we invite Christ to be the Lord and the Savior of our lives, it's after that moment that the Holy Spirit begins to fill us, transforms us, and we can please God, and we can, you know, we're spiritually born anew. I was 12 when the Holy Spirit filled my life, and from that moment, I've never been the same since. It was on a Sunday night, I was simply prayed for, and after that moment, it's as if life just seemed to be in 3D, full color. Everything just changed for me, and I've never been the same since. That doesn't mean life has been a walk in a park, all right? You know, I haven't been walking on clouds since the age of 12. But it's that moment of the Holy Spirit being in my life, giving me strength to do all things. To do all things. You may ask the question today, well, how do I know if I belong to my Heavenly Father? He tells us this. It's through His Spirit speaking to our spirit in Romans 8, verses 15 to 16. Paul says this, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Isn't that amazing? Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. We've celebrated that already in some of our worship. It is the person of the Holy Spirit that leads us to salvation. We are spiritually born, and he says to all of us today, you are mine. You are mine. I'm not sure what you are going through. As you're watching us at home, I'm not sure what you're going through. But through the Spirit of God, the Father is saying to us, you are mine. Why don't you just take a moment and say, I belong to Jesus. The person of the Holy Spirit, we experience the power of salvation. We also have power to walk in the will of God. I've done this on purpose, guys. These motorcycles are coming past. It's part of the sermon. (laughs) The Holy Spirit the person of the Holy Spirit, he gives us the power to walk in the will of God. When we don't know where to go, when we don't know what to say or how to make it through the day, and maybe you're feeling like that today as you're watching with us or in the house, the Holy Spirit is wanting to work in us. He is wanting to guide us and lead us to walk in the will of God. In John 14, verse 26, we read these words, and it's the amplified version. It's brilliant. It says, But the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things. And he will remember, and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Isn't that amazing today? The Holy Spirit has come to help, has come to guide. When I'm driving to an unfamiliar place, I'm sure we all do it. We use our sat-nav, don't we? The sat-nav helps us. It gives us that estimated driving time. It gives us the route And we use our sat-navs. Last week when we went to the Elim Summit in Harrogate, I was thankful for my sat-nav. My passengers were thankful for my sat-nav so that we got there eventually. But it's great that we have a sat-nav to help us. 
and the, the Holy Spirit of God, He is our sat nav. As He dwells in us, He will be our counselor, He will be our guide. If you are in a place and you don't know what to do, I want to encourage you to pray. Pray and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit because He is wanting to guide us. If you are walking past somebody, sometimes the Holy Spirit will prompt us to go and share with that person or help that person. I want to encourage you, when you have that prompting, follow His leading. Or if you are in the middle of a conversation, or you're just about to go into a conversation and you're thinking, God, how can I help this person? Call on the person of the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. He will help you. He will give you the words to say. When we are led by the person of the Holy Spirit, we're not led by our own desires. We're not led by our own faults. That journey to Harrogate, there was a moment where I took my eye off the sat-nav and we ended up in a housing estate and we must have traveled for about 10 minutes around the housing estate, just trying to get back onto the route. And it wasn't a great moment for the passengers again because I was throwing them all over the place. But we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will say to us, and you've experienced it, he'll say, stop, don't go there. Take a step this way, follow my lead. The Holy Spirit will say, get out of the way, there's something dangerous. We need to be in his will. Wait a moment, listen to the Holy Spirit's voice. It is step by step that we follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's not a one-off moment. It's not a one-off experience. It is moment by moment, step by step, that we hear his voice. Jesus said it this way in John 16, verse 13. He says, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. There are many voices competing for our attention. There are many distractions. I want to encourage us today. Let's hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. He is wanting to guide us in truth. Next, we note that the Holy Spirit will help us to share about Christ boldly. He comes. He helps us. For some of us, talking to another person about our faith or about spiritual things, it can be so intimidating. The voice, uh, kind of, our lips can go dry. We think, what on earth are we going to say? How are we going to help this person? But as followers of Jesus, we're not to be nervous. We're not to be intimidated. The Holy Spirit will give us the power to share our faith boldly. The Apostle Paul knew this firsthand. And he says these fantastic words in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 4 to 5. He says, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might rest on human wisdom, so that, sorry, I've lost it, so that, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. There's an example there. Sometimes we can fluff our words. But the Holy Spirit can still speak through those moments. Paul was saying, it's not about my ability. Paul was saying, I'm not an incredible speaker. But when I opened my mouth, the Holy Spirit came and he did what only he could do. And that's what happens to us when we are here in preaching or teaching, when we're in worship, when we're praying. The Holy Spirit will come and he will say things to you and I and he will personalize it to our situation. And we walk away saying, God spoke to me. I've shared his voice. And the same goes when we are going to share Christ with someone. You may think, I don't know what to say. I'm nervous. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God comes 
and you're actually quoting scripture that you thought, where did that come from? But it's the boldness, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that comes and helps us in that moment. A great example of this is with Peter and John. They had just been before the Sanhedrin, a Jewish court, and they went back to a place to pray with their friends. And here's what scripture says in Acts 4, verse 31. It says that after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. When the Holy Spirit comes, he comes to give us boldness so that we can share. Fourthly, the person of the Holy Spirit comes and has come to help us live a holy life. To help us live a holy life. When the forces of darkness are wanting to tempt you into a sinful lifestyle, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that helps us to overcome and to live a holy life. Romans 8 verse 5 to 6 says this, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Before we knew Christ, our lives are dominated by sinful thoughts. We can easily lose our cool. We can shout at that person who is doing our heads in. We can scream at our kids. We can think lustful thoughts. We can be bitter. We can be jealous. Without the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are vulnerable to attack. We're vulnerable. But when we know Christ when we are filled with the person of the Holy Spirit, we have a power to live a holy life. We have a power to overcome. His Spirit renews our mind. We start to think about the things that please Him instead of being dominated by our fleshly nature. It says in verse 6, doesn't it, that the mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind given by the Spirit is life and peace. Today in your lives, God is wanting you to know life and peace. His presence. The question we have to ask ourselves is, are we being controlled by the Holy Spirit? Or are we being controlled by our sinful mind? Galatians 5, Galatians 5 verse 16 to 17 Paul says this, so I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. There's that battle that is going on. There are two forces at war, the flesh against the Spirit. But when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we can overcome. Today, you can overcome. Allow the Holy Spirit of God to lead you in a holy life. To lead you in a holy life. As I conclude my message, I want to encourage us today, let's not resist the work and the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let's not resist his voice in our lives. You may say, well, how on earth can I resist the Holy Spirit? As believers, there are times when the Holy Spirit is prompting us. He is speaking. We feel it deep within. We feel the spiritual sat-nav working. We can't explain it. We just know it. And at that moment, we have a choice. And sometimes we just think, no, that's not God. I'm just going to move on. That wasn't God prompting. But I want to encourage you, hear his voice, follow his prompting. Stephen in the New Testament, he was giving a speech. And uh, before, it's a famous speech, and after it, 
he was stoned for what he said, and you'll see why when you, when you read what he said. And these are the words that Stephen said in Acts 7, verse 51. He said this, You stiff-necked people, your hearts and your ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Today, I just want to encourage us. Let's open up our hearts. Let's open up our lives to the moving of the Spirit. Because the reality is this. If we don't, we can hurt his feelings. Scripture shows us that we can grieve. That we can quench the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is literally like pouring water on top of a fire. I want to encourage us today, let's not allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to go out in our lives. But let's keep on being filled and being filled and being filled with his presence. Neil brought us a verse last week and I want to bring it again. It's from Ephesians 5 verse 18. And it says this, let's read it together. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to encourage us all. Let's not allow some substance, some habit, some situation to control our lives. But let's be filled with the Spirit of God. Let's be under His control. Amen? Let's hear from Him. Let's allow Him to lead us, to guide us. Let's allow him to correct us. Sometimes he comes to do that, to convict us. He is walking with us, and he is in us today. He is in us. And I want to encourage us all, let's reach out to him. Let's obey him. Let's glorify him. I'm going to encourage the worship team to come. And why don't we just take a moment just to welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives he is here. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. We want to be a people that obey you. I don't know what you're facing today, but I want to remind you that we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. As the Spirit speaks to us, guides us, and empowers us. And today in this moment in the house and at home, He is wanting to empower you. Let's allow Him to do that. We welcome His presence. Holy Spirit, would you empower us? Would you fill us? We want to hear your voice. The Holy Spirit comes to give us supernatural power. He comes to give us supernatural ability. He comes to give us discernment. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Holy Spirit, your presence. We welcome you. We welcome you. I'm so thankful today we don't have to do the Holy Spirit's job. Sometimes we feel we need to do things for him. We don't. We just need to have an open heart, an open life, and just welcome him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit. He wants to do his perfect work in our lives. At home, in the house, let's ask the Holy Spirit to fill us all. Fill us anew. Fill us afresh. Maybe you haven't heard the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life and in your situation for a long time. 
I just pray that in this moment, that in our worship that we're going to go into, that you will hear his voice afresh. Holy Spirit, we open ourselves to you. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for drawing us to Jesus and saving us. Thank you that you give us power to walk in the will of God. Thank you that you give us power to share Christ. Thank you that you help us to live a holy life, a life that you have called us to. In Jesus' name, amen.